Well, I'm getting low on uh, high carbon steel for knife blades, so I drew up a new blade. Um, I'm going to, this is just a scrap piece of aluminum. It was knife handles, but um, I don't remember what happened. Uh, they got messed up, <laughs> so scrap. So I'm gonna run my new knife blade program just on this, just see how it looks. I've got a couple different uh, cusp heights uh, for like the groove, the texture uh, that the ball end mill will leave. Oh, I got a splinter. And I just wanna see kind of what they look like before I run it on a actual piece of high carbon steel. So, got the lube cube set up. Got some trim SC520. I mixed it about 25%, which I believe is pretty high. It says not to exceed 35-ish percent. So it's not at the max, but um, where this is just mist coolant, it'll be fine. If it were flood coolant, you'd probably want to go for whatever they recommend. Like, I think it's usually around 5 to 10%, but yeah, this is what we got. So I'm going to load up the program and see what it looks like. All right, moment of truth. I think, oops, I think it has to retouch the tool because on my drilling operations, I do them all together and I just do them all with the same tool and I retouch off for each one. Otherwise, I have to make a separate program for each drill size and there's four different drill sizes here. So in between each program, I just put a stop and I'll put in the correct drill bit and then have it remeasure. That way I could just export them all with the same, at the same time into the same files. Super annoying, but moment of truth to see if the loop cube kicks on by itself. Pretty good chance I didn't do something right. M1 break execution. Cycle start. So what the heck, this might be Hopefully this is just the referencing. Oh yeah. Also, every time I start the machine, I have to re-reference the spindle nose to the tool setter. And that's pretty annoying. Is there a way around that? I guess it loses, it loses track, I guess, when you shut it down, but it's kind of annoying that you have to retouch off the spindle nose um, every time you start the machine. All right, moment of to drill the holes so I swear I've done it this way before though I don't know why it didn't stop in between there's five different operations for this spot drilling um, a second spot drill for a tiny hole that couldn't go as deep and then I was gonna drill three 200 thou holes one 120 thou hole and one 40 thou hole but for some reason it didn't stop in between each operation. Bummer. Um, all right, we're just gonna skip the whole drilling and I will, yeah, we'll just do the main machining part. That's, that's what I really care about. And also now I know that won't work. <laughs> much coolant coming out. There we go. A 
horrible fuel coming out now. The coolant, it looks like it'll run fine, and then I have to turn it up to get coolant to start flowing again. Yeah, like now it looks like it's just air again.
so let's see how it feels. Dude, that's gonna look so sweet. So, whoa, whoa, freaking camera. So this is two and a half thou cusps, and this is seven tenths of a thou. So a little under a thousandth of an inch, and then two and a half thousandths. And I actually think that looks kind of cool. So this is the back of the blade, this is the tip of the blade. Um, let's see if I can get in there a little better. I think it'll actually look pretty neat. Um, even if I just left it just like this. Um, so this stuff, this seven thou cusp, that stuff would actually polish out if, uh, you just hit it with some really light sandpaper. This stuff is a little bit deeper, just catches the fingernail. Um, but it, yeah, it's just a cool design, I think. Um, only thing I don't like is this stuff up here. I couldn't figure out a good way to clean that all up. So it's just not very even. But yeah, I'm gonna run just the last program, which is just contouring it out. And we'll see how she looks. There's no cooling coming out again. Well, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I, so yeah, let's see. So this was seven tenths of a thousandth for this, the middle section and the actual blade portion. Well, not the actual blade portion. The actual blade portion will have to be uh, filed in and then sharpened. And then up here is two and a half thousandths. So I'm not sure if I want to do the whole thing two and a half thousandths. So there's three different planes if you can kind of see them. This, this, uh, the edge part, and then the middle part, and then the back. And the back is two and a half thou. The middle and the bottom are seven tenths of a thou. Um, and then these are all just tabs because once this side's machined, it has to be flipped over and the backside machined. But all in all, with the, uh, with the mister, definitely can run it a lot faster. <laughs> way, way faster than I could run it without it. And it leaves a pretty good finish. There's one little thing I don't like right there. I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to check the tool path. But everywhere else looks pretty sweet. It's nice and smooth too. Um, and then same thing with these uh, fillets. I don't really like the way those look. They look okay down here. It's just this back section. And then, yeah, that's where the spring will sit. Yeah, cool. I think, uh, I'll probably just leave it just like this, uh, the uh, cusp heights, and look into why this tool pass messed up and see if there's anything I can do about this fillet. And then we will run it on some steel. But yeah, these are the blades. 
can't remember what I did. I think I might have used a six millimeter end mill instead of a quarter inch. I think that's what it was. And it just cut it out too small. Um, it might have been the other way, quarter inch instead of six mil. Can't remember. Um, but yeah, looks pretty cool. Beauty. All right, thanks for watching. See y'all later.